this week's episode of Naruto Shippuden, the Hokages return from the dead. And thank God they don't want to eat our sweet and succulent brains. They actually want to help out in the war. In fact, they decide to give Sasuke a little bit of a history lesson about the true meaning of a village and what it means to be a shinobi. What I can say personally about this episode is I loved a lot of it. It moved a little slow in some parts, but honestly, just getting to see all of the Hokages come back interacting with each other in one room is really awesome. And you gotta remember, there's still Sasuke and Orochimaru right there too, and it makes for a lot of really great interactions. So let's just roll through each of the Hokages one at a time. First we have Minato Namikaze, that's Naruto's father, the fourth Hokage, and he gets the least amount of dialogue out of everyone, and that's understandable, he will have a bigger role to play later. However, he's mostly there just to be completely shocked by everything and to sort of be there with the viewer. Then we have the third Hokage, that's Hiruzen Saratobi, and he gets to explain to Sasuke how everything he learned about Itachi is essentially true, how he stopped this entire massive coup and war from happening with the village, and how the third Hokage protected Sasuke, and he just sort of accepts it, that's the way it is. But really guys, the highlights this week are the first and second Hokage, that's Hashirama Senju and Tobirama Senju. These two are fantastic, and they could not be more different from each other. First there's Hashirama Senju, who is basically Goku, or Luffy, or any other typical shonen series that you've ever seen over the course of the last 20 years. What I will say is, I love seeing this version of the character, because if you guys remember way back in the day, during that Chunin exam arc where Orochimaru summoned both Tobirama and Hashirama, they really didn't have a defined personality quite yet. In fact, they were very stoic and very quiet, and that probably had to do with the fact that Orochimaru had a little more control over them, and he is giving them a little more free will this week, thus they're able to show off their personality. But I love it. Seeing this in the manga version was funny. Getting to hear it with voices is even better. I especially love when uh, Hashirama learns that his granddaughter became the newest Hokage, and he immediately freaks out when he learns this, and they show this younger version of Tsunade, which looks absolutely hilarious waving money around and smiling like crazy. It's, it's just really one of those parts that just makes me really appreciate the humor of the Naruto series. However, the exact antithesis to Hashirama is Tobirama, who frankly is a badass. Aside from the fact that he just looks awesome, he really doesn't talk any shit. He's really got just as much bite as Bark. He's not taking any crap from Orochimaru or Sasuke, and this is something that I think was handled way better in the anime version than in the manga version, when he suddenly powers up and his hands are still crossed and everything. In fact, he just lifts one single finger and everybody gets blown back. It's really awesome. But then Hashirama powers up and calms him down, and even Orochimaru does now have the power to stop Tobirama oh so slightly, thanks in part due to the Zetsu. But this is all leading up to this moment where actually Sasuke decides to ask them, what is a village? What is a shinobi? Depending on the answer he gets from all of these Hokages and the backstory that Hashirama is about to give him, will really decide what he's going to do in the rest of the series. And this is a crucial turning point for the series, guys. This is also going to lead into the backstory of Madara Uchiha and Hashirama Senju. In fact, at the end of the episode, the animators gave us a little treat and a little bit of action where we got to see a battle between Madara Uchiha and Hashirama Senju, and it looked badass. The best part about it, easily, is when Madara uses his Susano and turns it into armor to put over Kurama the Nine-Tailed Fox. It looks really, really great, especially the scene where he's running towards Hashirama. He takes out his sword and blows a bijou bomb on it, turning it into this massive, like, Ross and Shuriken-type bijou bomb attack, which just destroys a landscape, no big deal. But then you have Hashirama, who is touted as the god of the shinobi world, and it definitely shows in this episode as he releases his sage mode, which is a nice little twist. When I saw this in the manga for the first time, I loved it. He's truly the master of sage mode, because you can tell that his face hasn't changed too much, he just has the markings on his face, and he is able to summon this massive Buddha statue with literally a thousand arms. The episode ends with both him and Madara charging each other, ending the episode in a blinding light, getting you excited for next week's episode. 
So what's the rundown on this week's episode of Naruto Shippuden? Well, I think it was handled pretty well. The animation was okay for the most part. You gotta realize, though, most of the episode is just guys standing around and talking. However, at the end of the episode, the animation certainly popped off a little bit more with that battle, and it looked really nice and flashy. I love the fact that we actually have color for these characters. When you're reading this in the manga, it just doesn't look as flashy. When you see that blue fluorescent Susanoo going over Kurama's skin and turning into this, like, big dragon armor... It looks pretty badass. The other things that made this episode really good is getting to see some more defined personalities to the Hokages, and their voice actors did a fantastic job. Hashirama is just as goofy as I imagined, but he still manages to be just as intimidating when he needs to be. Toby Rama is awesome. I think he's going to be one of the standouts in this arc, and even though the guy is dead, there's a lot of room for characterization for this guy. Minato, while he didn't really get to say too much, is going to be more important later, as is the third Hokage. However, it's this backstory that looks like it's about to get really interesting. The animation and the artwork this week was pretty clean and consistent throughout. There were a few moments where it looked a little wonky, but for the most part, it looked pretty good throughout the whole episode. Otherwise, I loved everything about this one. I loved the story elements, I loved the voice acting, I love all the new characters that have been popping up, and I'm really excited to see what they're going to do with the entire backstory with Hashirama and Madara. I think it's going to be really entertaining, and it is crucial to the series. And as a manga reader of Naruto, now that I'm watching this now after like the most recent week of manga, like, I'm now looking at things in a completely different perspective, and that actually makes it kind of interesting. That was something that was sort of, like, affecting me when I was reading this week's manga. If you guys do read the manga, try to keep those spoilers to a minimum for those who uh, do not read the manga version. But uh, there it is. So, I'm going to give this week's episode a 9 out of 10. I really don't have too many complaints with it. You know, obviously, I'd like more to happen. But for what was there, I really enjoyed it. I loved all the interactions with the characters, and everybody here is just awesome. And if anything, it's just fun to see Suigetsu shitting his pants in fear in front of all of these Hokages. It's definitely worth the price of admission. So check it out, guys. Pretty cool episode. You guys heard my thoughts about this week's episode of Naruto Shippuden, but I want to hear yours, and you can tell me with your comments below. Did you guys have a favorite moment from this week's episode? Do you have a favorite Hokage that was resurrected? And what do you think is going to happen in the backstory between Madara and Hashirama? And what do you want to see from the future of the series in general? Remember guys, before you leave, make sure and hit that like button so you can give this video a thumbs up. It's really, really easy to do. But the easiest way to help out our videos is to watch them and to subscribe to the channel. It's very easy and you can also check us out on Facebook you can also check us out on Twitter I'll put links to those in the description box below make sure to check those out as we have weekly updates to some really fun articles that you guys definitely need to check out and you guys can also donate to the channel if you would like to it really helps us out a lot so guys I will see you next time super Kami guru 9000 out